Hey, and welcome to this introduction to Packed Schemas and Tables. The goal of this tutorial is to get you familiar with what Packed Schemas and Tables are, why they're useful, and to demonstrate how you would implement these within a Packed Smart contract. Throughout this tutorial, I'll go over the following topics. First, I'll introduce Packed Schemas and Tables. Next, I'll go over how to define schemas and define tables from within the code in your smart contract. Then, I'll go over how to create tables. Finally, I'll introduce a few important built-in functions you can use to work with schemas and tables with Pact. All right, let's get started. Tables in Pact are responsible for holding all of the data for an application. Data is stored in a key row structure similar to other relational databases. They're defined by schemas that describe both the field values and field types. You can visit the documentation for more information on table creation and types and schemas in Pact. You can also view each of the available data types as shown here. These include things like strings, integers, decimals, and many other data types. A great way to get started with schemas and tables is to begin building some for yourself. So let's do that now. The first step to creating a table is to define its schema. Schemas specify the columns and data types for the table. They're defined within packed modules using def schema and consist of a series of field names and field types. Each field name specifies a column in the table, and each field type specifies the type of data held within that column. The example table here contains both field names and field types. In this example, there are three fields, balance, amount, and currency each with their own field type, including decimals and strings. To create this schema in Pact, you would use def schema, as shown here. Here, you can see a schema named accounts with each of the columns followed by their data types laid out in a key row structure. All table schemas you create will look similar to this, but they'll contain different field names and types. Field names can include whatever works best for your application, and field types can include any of the types supported by Pact. After defining the schema, you're now ready to define the table. Tables hold data created by the smart contract. These are defined within packed modules, and there is no limit to the number of tables you can define. This data can be added, read, or changed using functions that you'll create later in the tutorial. Tables are defined after the schema using def table, followed by the table name and a reference to the table's schema. Let's go back to the accounts example. Given the account schema, you can define the table like this. As you can see, we named the schema accounts, but the table is named accounts table. This naming convention helps you differentiate between the schema and the table. Also notice that the table and schema are represented as a pair, separated by a colon. And finally, the curly braces around the schema name are there because the schema is an object. So that's it for defining a table. Once tables are defined, they still need to be created. An important note here is that even though tables are defined within the module, creating tables in Pact is done outside of the module. To create a table, use the built-in function createTable, followed by the table name as defined within the module. As you can see, the syntax for creating tables is simple. The main concern here is to make sure that you follow through with creating each of the tables you defined within the module. When working with tables, there are many built-in functions available for you to work with the table's data. Notice that these functions are similar to common options available in other databases, partially following the commonly known CRUD, Create, Read, Update, Delete acronym. Create, or in this case, Insert, helps you insert new rows into a table. Read allows you to read values from a table. Update can update values from a table. And Delete is not possible in Pact. Delete isn't available because, as you may know, you can't delete data from a blockchain. So, in a way, it's not quite like CRUD, but it is helpful to know where it's the same and where it differs from common database functions. Let's look at examples of each of these functions now. Insert functions are used to add new data into a table. You can find information on using insert in the documentation. This is useful when creating new information such as entities, loans, accounts, and in any other case where you may want to add data. For an example of an insert function, pretend you have the following table. It's a table named entity table with two columns, key and entity name. 
To add a row to this table with an entity name of my entity at the key of entity1, you would write the following packed code. Notice that it's the table name followed by the ID, the column name, and the data you'd like to enter. Also note that it's required that the key be entered as a string. If you'd like, you can also place insert within a function and use the inputs to add new data to rows within a table. This will help you add rows more dynamically from within your application. Here's an example using insert from within a function. It's the same as before, but now you can pass in different values using the parameter as shown here. Another useful built-in function is read. Read allows you to read rows from a table for a given key. You can also find information on how to use this function in the documentation. As an example, imagine you had the following table and you wanted to read the balance and currency at the key of account one. Using read, you can specify the ID at the table given and you'll get back the information you request. In this case, you'll get back the balance and currency of key account one, which is four and USD. Here's an example of how to get similar functionality by using read from within a function. Here, you would pass in the ID of your choice and get back the balance of the currency of that ID. Next, let's take a look at the update function. Update functions can be used to update a value in an existing row of a table. Updating is helpful in situations where you need to change the status of a column or amend the initial data set to a new value. Using update, you can specify the row ID to update a value within that row. This value would generally be passed in by the user as a function parameter. Here's an example of an update function. Pretend you had the following assets table and wanted to update the asset price. The amend asset price function here updates the asset price of an assets table. It then reads the value of the updated column. The same pattern can be used in many different ways. For example, you may be creating an asset and want to track its progress using fields like to do, in progress, or done. In this case, you could use this example function, asset update, to change the status of the asset as it progresses through the process. So that's it for update. It's pretty similar to the other functions you've seen and become an extremely useful function when building smart contracts. Aside from the functions used to manipulate data, there's a few others that can be useful. One of these functions is select. Select is used to read values from a table. This is similar to read, but select includes more specificity, allowing you greater flexibility in what information you choose to select. The syntax for selecting from tables closely resembles SQL statements. The simplest select statement you can create would be to select all values in an existing table. That's done like this, select followed by the table name. Similar to other built-in functions, you can run this from within another function. Let's see this in an example. Here's the assets table from earlier with a few more rows of data added in. You can run the following select statement to return all the values from this table. And this query, as you may have guessed, will return all of the values from the assets table. But here's where it gets interesting. Along with select, you can also use a where statement to further refine your query, as shown here. Rather than returning the entire assets table, this query returns the asset name and asset price where asset name is equal to two. This query would return the following values from the assets table. You can use this to get very specific about the data you'd like to return. As another example, you can also specify operators such as greater than or less than from within the where clause as shown here. This query would return all values from the assets table where asset price is greater than six. That would be this data here. Along with select, another useful function is keys. This function returns all the keys in the table. Given the previously shown assets table, you could return each of the keys using the code below. You simply type keys and assets table. And as always, this can be done in a smart contract within a function as shown here. This function will allow you to view all keys from a specific table by calling the getKeys function. All right, so that wraps up this tutorial on schemas and tables with PACT. Throughout this tutorial, we went over the following topics. First, I introduced schemas and tables. Next, 
We went over how to define schemas and tables and how to create tables. And finally, we went over a few important built-in functions you can use to work with tables and schemas with PACT. By completing this tutorial, you've mastered many of the core ideas surrounding schemas and tables. From here, you can try building your own database from scratch or by using existing database examples to work from. An excellent resource for finding existing schemas for well-designed databases can be found here. If you're unfamiliar with database design, you can review most of what you need to know here. That website goes into a ton of detail, so if you'd like to focus more specifically on what might be useful to you right now, you can find that here. All of these links are provided in the text below the tutorial. Try finding a database you're interested in to practice recreating some of its functionality. And if you're not quite ready to try that, you can check out the next tutorial instead. You'll see many more examples of tables, schemas, and their related functions throughout the rest of this series.